All right, we have a thermal camera sent into the channel by review. Uh, this is by Kai Wheats. And I normally don't do unboxings, but the packaging of this was so nice, I thought I'd show it. Uh, there's a, a flap here, and then uh, kind of looks like maybe an iPhone or something, right? It comes with uh, uh, it comes with a big thick manual, multi-languages. That's what's in here. And it comes with uh, the charger and USB-C USB -C, uh, cable. And then... Uh, and then the device. So anyway, let's uh, let's take it out here and take a look at it. All right, comes with one of those hard uh, zippered cases, and uh, this is nice. They've gone a step further. It actually has a uh, it has a nice insert. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but it has a nice uh, molded insert so the device fits in there instead of just being kind of kind of thrown in there maybe with a little strap over it rattles around so they've done a they've done a nice job of making a molded uh, a molded inset so I appreciate I appreciate that all right let's look at the actual device it's it's typical I mean all of these look about the same um, you really have a choice with thermal cameras either a tiny one that you plug onto your your phone or a standalone one that has a nice big battery and everything in it nice display this one has a nice big display in it i really appreciate that it's a little a little unusual on the front a lot of them uh well here let me show you we'll we'll, we'll compare it against this one this one is a uh, a vevor uh sc240m so we can kind of compare the two they're about the same size uh, but most of the time you'll see something like this on the front where there'll be uh, multiple cameras and maybe some LEDs and things like that. Uh, this one has a, a protective cap on the front, which is nice, and uh, it swings out of the way. So I do like that. Um, it only has two things in the front. It has uh, the thermal camera and then the visible camera. So uh, those are there. Uh, the display is bigger on this one. And uh, the pixel count is better on this one. I think this one is 240 by 180, and this one is uh, 256 by 192. That's, a, that's like the bigger range right now for thermal cameras. That's, if I was going to buy one, I would, I would tell you, make sure you get at least a, a 256 by 192. Those seem to be readily available now. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and turn it on now. Uh, both of these guys here, it takes a long button press to turn these on. I'm not sure why. Uh, and uh, the nice thing about the Kai Wheats is the boot time. Uh, it starts up much, much faster. I mean, they aren't blazing. Although you get an image over here, it's a black and white image and it's not the thermal. So this is a thermal camera ready to go. This one is still initializing and it takes a while for the thermal camera to stabilize and calibrate. Um, these thermal cameras have a shutter on them. There you go. So we finally have a thermal over here. So you can see the display size is a little bigger on the Kai Wheats, and I believe it's a little better. Um, the uh, image quality, I think, is a little bit better on screen. All right. Otherwise, they're pretty compatible. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this one off, and we'll concentrate on the Kai Weights. That has the typical menu thing. So this is. Uh, let's see. Let me let me move the camera a bit. All right. There you go. So. Um, you can see this is the thermal image. If I push this button. I now get the visible image of the two. Press the button again, you get a combo of the two. Uh, this is more thermal heavy, uh, even more thermal heavy, where you can see some heating effects there. But it's a dual image. It's visible plus, uh, visible plus. And then we go back again to, uh, to thermal only. I would I normally use these things in thermal only. I don't really see too much of interest for the visible one. All, all I can see, I can see use cases for it, but uh, I don't use them a lot. Um, then these buttons up and down allow you to change what's on the screen. Yeah, you can get the min-max. Uh, 
I guess that's all it does is it turns off the off this bottom. Oops, sorry. Kind of watch the camera here. Turn this on and off. You get the thing here at the bottom. And again, this one sends you through all the different modes of visible, visible plus IR. Um, we have a menu where we can do image correction. Image correction is the parallel, the parallax error between the visible and the image and the thermal, I should say. So you have a visible camera and a thermal camera. And here is the visible camera, here's the thermal camera. So they're gonna have a parallax error. And that's what image correction does. It allows you to shift one with respect to the other. So you had a particular working distance, you can make the two overlay accurately. So that's, that's nice. We have stored videos and stored photos. It does do 24 frames a second, although it does seem to be a little bit um, it stutters a little bit in, in, in taking videos. Um, color palette, you can uh, change it to spectrum iron cool, white and black, you know, white hot or black hot. Uh, so all normal stuff. You can change the emissivity, um, all normal stuff. And then there are some settings. Uh, auto shutdown. Uh, when I got it, it had auto shutdown defaulted to five minutes and it would time out on me. So I've turned the auto shut off off so it, it doesn't shut off on me. Uh, brightness of the screen. I think I upped that brightness. Yeah, I have it on high. I think it defaults to medium. Uh, language, C or F, temperature range, time format, set the time, spots. Very... Anyway, it's got all the normal stuff in it. Um, Yeah, I mean, I do like it. Uh, I think it's a, uh, a, a slight improvement over this one. This one seems to be noisier. Um, and um, there's a few more pixels on this one, but this one is set for a more high sensitivity. And I think there's a, I think that's actually one of the settings in here. Uh, we can go to settings. Um, let's see, sensitivity. Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. I thought I remember seeing it somewhere here. Hmm. Photo videos, color palette, emissivity. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, but once again, this, this one seemed to be have a little bit higher gain, but gives you a very noisy image. This one gives you a very smooth image, and uh, I do prefer, I do prefer this one better. All right, we've got some some interesting things to look at now. Let me move the camera. All right, here's a, a, a radio on, and I think you can see we've got some a hot spot over here. Uh, there's actually a TO220 uh, transistor here on a heat sink, so it's getting warm. And you can see it's getting up to 35 degrees C. Uh, they can kind of kind of look around, keep, that, keep the glare off the camera here. You can see that there, maybe there's some uh, some hot spot over there. And anyway, yeah, so it's it's a really good tool for troubleshooting. Uh, now that I have some thermal cameras, I I tend to use them quite a bit now for troubleshooting to see what's getting hot. Um, yeah. So they are seem they do seem to be a useful tool. Now these aren't cheap. There's about three hundred dollars. So uh, you do have to think about whether this is something you need in your lab or not. But I do believe they add quite a bit of functionality for uh, optics lab. Or, I mean, uh, electronics lab. All right. So this is the uh, this is the radio that I was working on. And you can see the the video stutters a little bit. So it's not a real smooth. Uh, to see where I've been holding, holding this. So one of the fun things to do is to uh, take your hand and put it on a, a cold workbench. And then when you remove your hand, the uh, handprint, the heat of the handprint stays behind. That's always a fun thing to look at. So I'm here in the garage and uh, there's my chair. My chair is warm because I've been sitting on it. Uh, I can't uh, show you the thermal of the squeak or not, but... <laughs> And then if I go up to the roof in my garage, the roof is hot and the garage is cold. 
Let's go take a look at some other things. All right. Here's Inside Dog. Inside Dog is nice and warm. Let's see if we can get Inside Dog to walk across the carpet here. Come here, Leo. Come on. Leo. Come. And. Hi, Leo. Oh, he's got a stretch. stretch. He's got a stretch. Hi, Leo. Hi buddy. Hi, buddy. Now you can see it, though. Gal is calling him over. <laughs> she doesn't want me to photograph her, so I'll just photograph Inside Dog. Hi, Inside Dog. <laughs> he's a good boy. He's a good boy. There he goes with his little footprints. Footprints in the snow. Or actually on the carpet. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, that was my review of the uh, Kai Wheats. Uh, the model number is the KTI dash W01. 256 by 192. Yeah, I like it.